Okay, so welcome back to the morning commute with Hopi living in the city. It is Tuesday and it is 73 degrees outside. I'm not sure what the high is going to be, but if it's anything like yesterday, it is going to be a warm one. So make sure and get outside early this morning, do your exercise, yard work, walk your dogs, whatever you need to do outside. And then stay in this phase, stay hydrated later on this afternoon just to be safe. Today we have a couple exciting activities at work. One is the delivery of a Vitec 2 instrument and that will be replacing our BD Phoenix M50 instrument. Both of those are used to identify microorganisms along with providing a susceptibility profile on them once they're identified. Just to let providers know what antibiotic regimen they should use in fighting any infections. So that's coming and I need to finish building a panel for that. <coughs> And then this afternoon, the trainer for the Diasaurin XS instrument will be in flying into Phoenix. And hopefully, everything goes good. With that. So that one, we're, <clears throat> I'm still working on the connection. Hopefully, I have somebody on site today. To help with the help with the connection because I tried the serial connection yesterday and it didn't quite work and the settings for me to change the baud rate on the instrument are grayed out so I need either a service engineer or higher level authority to log in and change those for me. I also wanted to go with the the TCP IP setting and connection just to make things easier because I don't we don't have the ability to telnet onto the Lantronics devices anymore and so <clears throat> I won't be able to make the adjustment to the Lantronics device there I would have to either pull it offline and have it in, have the network um, or the configurations done offline using the software for the electronics device or I would have to see if I could get get to the device from one of our servers that has the software on there like they had a maybe a tie rod that broke because one tire is one front wheel is straight and the other is turned at an angle so yeah that's what's going on today it's time to enjoy some more coffee let's go see what's on the news The injuries, yeah, they're serious, but they're not life-threatening, according to Phoenix Police. Suspect is dead, and Southern is going to be closed from 7th Street to 12th Street, probably in Devlin, for several hours. Jim, do we know what led up to this? Are people talking, no. witnesses talking? I mean, was this an ambush? What do we know about that? No, witnesses are talking. It has not been made clear by police exactly what led up to this. Okay, um, I know there's so little information to work with right now, um, but you, you know, you, I don't, you remember this, Jim, uh, of course, a couple of years ago as we were heading out of uh, 2021, heading into 2022, it seems that, you know, former chief 
Jerry Williams was always stepping up to a podium in front of, or at least a bank of microphones in front of a hospital because so many police officers have been shot during that period of time. Um, it, yeah. it, it seems like it's calmed down a bit, but you know, now hearing this morning that another officer has been shot, it's just, ah, it's just really hard to deal with. Yeah. It, Again, the chief will give more details, you know, hopefully in an hour or two, uh, we would learn exactly, you know, what uh, led to the situation, the shooting. Uh, we do know the suspect is dead. The officer is expected to survive, but uh, the injuries are serious. Mm. And again, it's just another, you know, tragic case of a, a Valley police officer being shot in the line of duty. All right, uh, Jim Cross, appreciate your time, and we'll let you uh, gather more information, which, of course, there's just not a lot right now. Uh, that's how this works, and police, uh, you know, they play it close to the vest. They don't want to give out too much information, you know, so that they can conduct their investigation in the proper way. Um, they don't want to give bad information, you know, stuff they may have heard from a, a witness or something along those lines that they haven't been able to corroborate. And so you just, you know, you got to work with what you, you have. But uh, Jim will have more for us uh, throughout the morning. And uh, we'll look forward to Chief Michael Sullivan, the interim police chief for the Phoenix Police Department, speaking a little later on. Yeah, and, and the show started at 5. We had very little information, and we've already updated that with more information just, you know, 25 minutes into the hour. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll want to keep it here on KTAR because you don't know when those new developments are going to be coming in. And we will bring them to you as soon as we get them. Uh, by the way, for those who are going Banner University Medical Center, that's the old Good Sam Hospital right there on McDowell uh, where that officer is being treated. And I'd, I'd imagine that's where the chief's going to speak from because that's where he... This is where police chiefs usually speak from if an officer is actually in the hospital. But we don't even know that detail yet, but we will bring it to you as soon as we uh, learn anything new on the shooting. Once again, near Southern Avenue and 10th Street, where a suspect is dead and a Phoenix police officer is in the hospital after being struck by a bullet. It's 548. Let's update traffic right now. John Rollers in the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center. And... This scene is, of course, affecting traffic. Yeah, huh? yeah, it is, uh, Jim. So let's uh, let folks know that, uh, yeah, Southern is going to be closed down for some time while this police investigation continues. So Southern Avenue shut down, closed between 7th Street and 12th Street this morning. So if you are headed out the door, Baseline, Broadway, uh, 7th Street is open, but uh, seeing some slowing at that intersection. You may want to drop south on Central Avenue, 16th Street, over on the east side to get around this and again this is going to be closed for some time one crash on a main line westbound i-10 near 59th avenue it is off to the right not really affecting anything and also of a crash at 163rd avenue and grand john roller ktar news we have an air quality warning in effect for the valley sunny skies today with a high of 105 looks like we're going to stay above the 100 mark through the rest of the work week uh, a four-day work week, by the way, right? Uh, low tonight of 76 and a high tomorrow under sunny skies of 103. Weather is brought to you by Howard Air. Weather replace or repair? Call Howard Air. KTAR News Time coming up on 550. Strong values and strong opinions. The Mike Broomhead Show. But I'm not defending the Republicans. They're as much to blame as the Democrats are. It's an equal failure that if they really want to secure the border, that they would do something legislative into the conflict. Some allies have not imposed restrictions on the weapons they have delivered, other uh, have. Meanwhile, the same issue is part of discussions between France's leader Emmanuel Macron and his German counterpart Olaf Scholz on the third and final day of Mr. Macron's state visit to Germany. The BBC's Damien McGuinness is in Berlin. On defense, Mr. Macron supports long-range weapons for Ukraine and thinks Kyiv should be able to use Western arms to strike military targets in Russia. Mr. Scholz disagrees. In other news, police in Hong Kong have arrested six people for writing messages the authorities say advocate rebellion against the state. The arrests of five women and one man are the first of their kind under the Chinese territory's own security law. Those are a few of the stories we're watching this hour. I'm Rob Hugh-Jones at the BBC in London. And here in Phoenix, morning edition on KJZZ. A long-awaited trial on school funding in Arizona will get underway today. This morning at 9 on the show, how the case came to be and what the sides will be arguing. 
at a massive program in California put the hopeless in hotels, and the results were powerful. That and more on the show this morning at 9 on KJZZ and KJZZ.org. On our way to 104, it's 79 now in Phoenix, 552. When carbon offsets are a little off. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Schwab. Schwab offers investors choices like full-service wealth management, self-directed investing options, and trading on think or swim. More at schwab.com. And by text COOL to 411-923 now and claim up to $2,000 off your Cool Sculpting Elite package. Cool Sculpting is the world's number one non-invasive fat reduction treatment. It's safe and there's little to no downtime. We've done over 38,000 treatments. Trust me, it works. Once the fat is gone, it's gone for good. Text COOL to 411-923 for your free consultation. No judgment, just guaranteed results. Transform your body today with Cool Sculpting Elite at Botify. License number ACROC. 222486. Hey, it's Mike Broomhead. We all know crime is on the rise, and while police response times are slower than needed, there is something you can do. Offering a set of voluntary principles, as it calls them, for establishing legitimate carbon credit markets. For example, the administration wants to standardize the idea that one credit corresponds to one ton of carbon dioxide, or its equivalent, reduced or removed from the atmosphere and that absent that credit, the reduction or removal would not have happened on its own. The White House says independent observers should be able to measure the impacts. Carbon credit schemes have come under criticism for making lofty claims which can't be backed up with measurable results. There are certification organizations, but they've faced questions about their effectiveness. The White House says companies should first clean up as much of their own emissions as possible before relying on credits. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow and Dow futures are down less than a tenth of a percent. S&P futures are up a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ futures up two tenths of a percent. The yield on the 10-year treasury is 4.461%. T-Mobile is buying up most of U.S. cellular for $4.4 billion. That'll get T-Mobile 2,000 additional towers for cell phone service. T-Mobile stock down two tenths percent in pre-market trading. Apple's iPhone sales in China jumped 52% in April. Apple stock is up about 1.4% in pre-market trading. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Bitwarden, the password manager used by millions for streamlined password management at home and at work. Learn more about people living on Tempe's streets dropped 34% over the past year, according to the most recent